Hey everybody, I'm Derek Bisson, and today's topic is going to be asset depletion. If you're the type of person who has a sizable liquid portfolio, and by liquid portfolio I mean checking, savings, money market, retirement, trust funds, etc., and you file little or in some cases maybe even no income on your federal income tax returns, and you've been turned down by your bank or credit union for a traditional home loan, I'm gonna share something with you today that could make all the difference in the world, and it's called asset depletion. So in this video, we're gonna cover the following topics. What is asset depletion? Who makes a good candidate for asset depletion? How is asset depletion calculated? And finally, four different types of asset depletion. Let's get started. Okay, so what is asset depletion? Asset depletion is just a fancy industry term for a lender using your liquid assets to derive an income stream to qualify your new home loan. So who makes a good candidate for an asset depletion program? An asset depletion program is literally designed for somebody who has a sizable liquid asset portfolio, but who files little or perhaps even no income on their federal income tax returns. So how is income calculated under an asset depletion scenario? So let's take a look at it using the most common type of asset depletion, a conventional loan. So under a conventional loan, the lender will take your total liquid assets from all of your accounts, minus your down payment and settlement charges for the loan, and the reserves, in other words, the cushion, and whatever's left over after closing is then divided by 360 months. And that figure now becomes the income stream for your new loan qualification. It, by the way, it's worth noting that on a conventional loan program, you are actually limited by the size of a conventional loan for a given area. So for most areas here in Florida, uh, as of the time of this recording, that conventional loan limit is $548,250. So that is the max you would be able to finance under a conventional scenario. So under all of these scenarios, we're gonna use the same thing. It's gonna be a purchase of an owner-occupied single-family home here in Florida. The amount of net assets, net liquid assets, after the down payment, settlement charges, and reserves have been removed is gonna be $750,000. Now let's see how they stack up. So on a conventional loan, again, we're gonna take that 750 divided by 360 months, and we're gonna come up with $2,083, okay? And you can do that up to, as again, as of the time of this recording, $548,250. Uh, that's not enough income on its own to qualify for a loan of that size. But if you have another source of income, uh, such as a pension, retirement, or another job actually, that may be enough to qualify. We have another great program called our private client portfolio program. And instead of 360 months, we use a 240 month amortization. That gives us 133% more income versus a conventional loan. So in this particular scenario, it gives us $3,125 per month. But the big difference here is, is that we can lend up to $6 million in the state of Florida. We have another program called our Flex Mortgage Program, which allows us to use an 84-month amortization. That means that on a $750,000 net liquid asset, we can generate $8,928 per month in usable income for qualification purposes. And we can write that on a loan amount all the way up to $2.5 million. Okay, under our flex program, we have another great option called an asset matching scenario. Under the asset matching scenario, basically if the liquid net asset is equal to or greater than the amount that you're borrowing on the new loan, then that is the qualification standard. We don't do any sort of amortization of the asset. In other words, if you have over $350,000 in the bank and you are getting a new loan for $350,000, you qualify. And there you have it. That's asset depletion in a nutshell. We hope you found this information helpful and insightful. 
And if you're looking to purchase, get pre-approved or just refinance your home anywhere in the state of Florida, we'd love to be of assistance. And if you have a particular scenario, we'd love to hear from you to discuss it. And remember, if you've been turned down by a bank or credit union and you have a scenario, anything like the one that we just described in this video, just remember, stop letting these banks tell you no when we have more reasons to say yes. Thanks again for dropping by. I'm Derek Bison, and this is Unconventional Lending.